Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is giving me another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and we're playing with the Ritual Beast deck again. We were we were never giving up on this deck without uh, without giving it a shot, because, Jesus, man, you just gotta open starter cards. It's easy. Like, this deck has so many starter cards. Look at it. Brilliant Fusion plus Foolish plus any of the Field Spell Engine is starter cards. This deck is fantastically well-equipped with starter cards, and then just blowout cards. Like, any cards that aren't engine cards are literally just blowout cards, like Rageki, Fissure, Macro, Dimensional Barrier, like stuff like that, like everything, and Maxi, like everything else is literally an engine and combo card, so like this deck just has a very high, like, ratio of combo cards and starter cards to, uh, to other stuff, so I'm a bit, uh, I'm a bit curious to see if we don't have a repeat performance of the last game, because, uh, didn't open as many starter cards as we would like. Uh, but ultimately, it just didn't end up getting there. But I mean, like, there's still so many different things that you can do with this deck as far as deck building. You can play Pot of Desires, you can play all these different stuff. This is just the route that I like the best because it's just a little bit more, like, uh, handleable. It's not, uh, it's not relying on too many outside variance factors, like, did I banish my Garden off Desires? Did I do this? Did I do that? Uh, you could still play Desires in this deck, and if you did play Desires, you'd probably do something like cut the Raigeki and maybe cut the Dimensional Fissure for it, um, or something like that. Something to that. Uh, to that regard, maybe cut like the upstart and the Raigeki. I don't know. It's definitely something that's possible. It's definitely something that's includable in the deck. I wish that there was room for more windows. Uh, personally, I love this card, but at one is perfectly fine because of the fact that the only reason you'd want to play two is so you can float into multiples of them um, off the same like uh, tag out from a ritual beast, but like that requires an erroneous amount of setup. So all that sort of nonsense. But anyway, let's not waste any more time talking about this deck. If you are here and you like Ritual Beasts, you know about this deck. You know what it does. You know all that sort of nonsense. So let's not waste any more time, and let's just jump straight into the game, shall we? And see if we have a better performance than last time. <laughs> oh, God. All right, so let's see how this ends up going. I won Rock, Paper, Scissors, which is great. Fantastic. Now, all that we need to... Hell yeah! Elder Conahawk, let's do this. <laughs> let's fucking go. I don't have any traps to my name, but I do have access to the entire Elder Conahawk play. Now, uh, the fact that it just asked him for a waiting response time makes me think that he either has Max C or Effect Veiler, based off what it like, based off the parameters of which it's asking him uh, for responses. Uh, because like this whole waiting box up here is super indicative of him having a hand trap and the fact that it didn't come up until I had a monster on the board is something that uh, is rather suspect but so what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, banish a paleo uh, and that way I will have access to doing some stuff now uh, we're gonna go into the conahawk I'll be able to put the paleo in grave um, or do I even do that first I can't even remember it's been so long um, I can just tag straight back out uh, and get another Conahawk search. Uh, I can get. Yeah, I think I just don't. If I remember correctly, you just go into like Petalfin first, and then uh, and then you just tag straight back out into Conahawk Elder. If I'm remembering this right, uh, it's been a while since I've actually opened Elder Conahawk, so um, it's uh, it's something that uh, that just needs to be uh, thought about for a second for me, uh, because you, most people. And like most of like the people that I saw playing way back when, uh, would legitimately just go straight into um, into the Ulti Conahawk and then put the Apelio in grave. But there's a more optimal way to do it, if I remember, the right way. Um, and I believe it has something to do with you uh, do this. So he's Valoring here, which is kind of weird, um, if I do say so myself. It's kind of odd that he would choose to Valor and then. Um, because like he could have Valored before, and that would have definitely prevented a good play string from happening. Uh, but so from now, I've got to go into this Conahawk here, and I've got to use this Conahawk's effect just to get a Steeds. Like this is a problem. <laughs> But at least I've got access to Oracle of Zephyr, so I can search uh, Zephyrum Pilica, which can bring back one of these cards uh, at a later date. Um, so what I will do is I'll put a Paleo and Elder in Grave, right? Uh, because what that will allow is I can get the Steeds here. I'll be able to Steeds for fucking one. Yeah, that was such a questionable Valor too. Like that Valor on if Valor had come down on the first Conahawk, like it would have just been just as good, uh, but it would have forced me into not getting another resource banish. Um, because I would have had to, well, no, I guess it would have been the exact same thing, but it's still weird. 
it's still weird and questionable, but so I'm gonna be able to steeds for one, hopefully. Unless I just get Kaiju, Darkhold, Raigeki, or whatever. Uh, this would be a problem. Um, he's playing Valor in his main deck too, that's a bit questionable. Um, as for the format right now, Valor is not the best. Um, unless your deck can search it, I would not recommend playing Valor because Maxi, the order of like how hand traps are as far as best to worst right now is Maxi, DD Crow, Ghost Ogre, Valor. <laughs> like, Valor is the worst of the playable hand traps. Um, unless, uh, unless your deck is capable of searching it, in which case it goes up a few pegs because it hits a good bit of, uh, a good bit of stuff. Um, so he's doing all this, but he's only got tuners on the board. Uh, so all I have to do is steeds whatever non-tuner he puts on the board, which is going to be that Doppel Warrior. Uh, so I'm holding down A here. Uh, so this seems super free. I just get to steeds this. So he's playing Synchrons. Uh, as if that wasn't uh, as if that wasn't obvious, but so this deck is actually quite a bit fragile uh, as far as that goes. But so my Conalhawk gets to survive a turn. That's not what I expected at all. Uh, but now I've got Raigeki as well, so I can just Raigeki this if uh, if the entirety of my uh, of my next play goes uh, impeded rather than unimpeded. But uh, we'll see. We will see what happens. But so I get to add the Zephyr Pilica here. I can normal summon it, give back the Apelio. The Apelio can banish the Elder from Grave, and then I can immediately start doing uh, Conahawk shenanigans. So that's why uh, that's why this is the way it is, and why I did that the way I did it. Uh, I just got really lucky that his deck is super fragile to Steeds in that opening that he presented. <laughs> I just got super lucky on that one. Not even gonna pretend. Um, now this could be something like Solemn Strike. It could be Dimensional Barrier. If it's Dimensional Barrier, then that's a huge problem. Um, Let's not even pretend like it isn't, uh, but so we'll just kind of take it as it comes. But so this Apelio is here, we we'll use it to banish the Elder, so now I can actually tag the Conahawk out uh, whenever I please. Uh, now I can go into an ulti Apelio and do some stuff there. I think I just kind of want to kill his board first, just because... I don't think there's a necessary. There, I don't think it's really necessary for me to like start committing into his back row, um, outside of uh, outside of just like trying to put this back in the extra deck and uh, getting getting my stuff back on the board. So what we'll do is yeah we'll put this to attack mode because he could be playing something like Mirror Forces or whatever. I'm I'm not too worried about it. I don't want to overcommit because like I'm really scared of losing my uh, of my con losing my Conahog at this point. Um, and if this doesn't go through, if this is something like a mirror force, right, uh, then I'll just tag this out to my stuff in defense mode, and uh, and then we'll be good. Uh, these will go away or wherever they need to go, but the elder Conahawk will come back. Uh, but so I'm just gonna try and clear his board before I uh, of monsters before I go into anything uh, meaningful, uh, because that just seems better. But so this will attack over that just because it's the most damage. And then the Zephyr Pilica will attack into the Quick Draw Synchron uh, because it is getting boosted by the Apelio, uh, meaning that it is bigger than the 1400 defense, so that's fine. Now, why is Yu Gi Oh Pro like really clunky? Um, like a lot more clunky than it usually is. At least it feels like it. I'm still running at like 60 FPS, but it's just feeling really, really clunky, and I do not know why. Uh, but so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the Return to Extra Deck effect to summon these first. Um, I'm gonna do that first, right? Uh, to see if this is okay. So it's a solemn warning. See, okay, that's fine. I'm perfectly okay with that happening there because now I just get to go into it again because it's already in my extra deck. You can't destroy cards in the extra deck, so that's 100% fine. Um, I could do this to special summon the Rampengu from hand, uh, which is super cool. Uh, I completely forgot about that interaction because uh, that interaction comes up so infrequently. Um, it's not something that happens often, uh, if you catch my drift. But so, we'll uh, banish a guy, Peleo, and we'll send a uh, uh, Laura to grave. Uh, just because. Seems pretty alright. But so, we'll activate this to return to. So, I'll return this, and I'll try to target Kana Hawk. And I'm just going to search like three cards uh, here. I'm probably going to be able to get Double Steeds Ambush, and then I've got the barrier. So, whoops. <laughs> well, actually, no, that's fine. It's still fine. Uh, that's not one of the cards I picked <laughs> to go back to the grave. <laughs> so that's fine. Um, so yeah, we'll Steeds here, and now this, I need to make sure I banish a Beast. 
uh, because that's going to be super relevant. Uh, the Elder can come back, and uh, this can't be special summoned either, so I need to uh, get the Petal Fin into circulation. And now what I have access into doing is going back into the Ulti Kona Hawk. Uh, if, if, yeah, why is it so clunky today? I don't understand. It's just super, like, taking, it's taking such a long time to, like, process, like, the commands. Like, look at this. I'm still running at 60 FPS, but it's just taking forever, and that's not something that I'm used to. Um, I'm used to it operating a little bit, you know, faster than that, you know? Just a tiny, teensy bit, it seems. Uh, but so, select a card to send to the grave. It would be, it would be, uh, I can get back Elder, and I can get back this. So it'll be the Apelio and the Elder is my target. And then I will tag this out, and get back Elder, and get back the Petal Fin. So I'll get a search for Ambush, and now I can make Kona Hawk one more time, uh, and from there I'll be able to do my stuff. Uh, so yeah, Ambush. And I'll be able to make Kona Hawk one more time, put stuff in Grave. Uh, Apelio will be able to fuel my uh, my banished stuff back up by being able to get it out of Graveyard off Ambush, so that's, that's not a problem. But so uh, we'll do Elder, and we'll do Rampangu here, uh, because Rampangu is chilling out in attack mode. We don't want to deal with that. Uh, and then the Conahawk here will get its searches. Uh, so I'll put the uh, I'll put the penguin, and I'll put the I'll put the both penguins in grave. The penguin and the penguin rider can go to grave uh, just for another steeds. And so this at this point this game should just be completely won um, because he's got zero cards, right? Uh, and I've got double steeds, ambush, and dimensional barrier. The dimensional barrier he doesn't even know about. That was still just a really weird Valor. Um, I still don't know if I agree with it or not. Um, giving giving it more thought, um, like after I'm done recording, will probably determine whether or not I agree with that Valor or not. Uh, but I'm still just more distracted right now by how clunky Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro is running because it's normally just like faster than this. And I don't understand why it's not going like at the speed of fucking sound, you know? Because it normally just goes really fast. It normally is really good <coughs> at uh, at registering very quickly. Uh, but so we'll do this, and then we will also uh, get. I'm gonna I'm gonna like lose to a flipped over Rageki here, so I'm gonna wait. <laughs> I thought we were in in phase until I saw where the button was. So if this is like he set Rageki to try and like mind game me, um, then this is gonna be like not bad for me. But uh, it would definitely be worse if I flipped over that ambush, because then I would be down to no cards, and it's like ah, uh, got me. Um, but so we'll go to in phase so that that can't be something that happens. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, we'll just do that. Uh, but so this will come back, and then the Apelio will come back, and then I'll use Apelio in the in phase to banish uh, the uh, the Rampangu that's in grave. Uh, yep, banish, and then uh, then we're golden, right? I think, I believe. Um, because I can get all these searches and stuff, or I could just literally like pump with a Peleo twice and then attack for game. So <laughs> uh, there's there's a there's a few options here for what we do have access to, but I think we can just attack for game here safely um, with little to no like re like just problems. Uh, so we'll banish the window, uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the Ulti Kana Hawk here. Um, just so that there is uh, more damage on board. Uh, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this Kana Hawk, right? And whether or not this is like a back row that outs the Kana Hawk, it doesn't actually matter. Uh, but what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to activate this to return to. I'm not going to tag it out. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put these in grave and I'm going to search another Apelio so that I can normal summon that Apelio. Or do I even play two Apelio in my list? I believe I do. I could be wrong. It could just be one Apelio. Yeah, it's just one Apelio. Oops. <laughs> well then, um, so what we have access to here is we'll just do it a different way. Uh, we'll just get win. We'll use Apelio to banish a card uh, that we just put to grave, right? Uh, so that'll pump uh, my stuff up. So we'll banish the uh, the Rampangu. And now I've got access into discarding a card to bounce this, uh, just so that it's easy. Um, but we were never being easy, right? We were never doing things the easy way. Uh, we will do this, and I'll use the Elder and the uh, Apelio to go into this. And I can actually 
I could actually just make Conahawk again um, and get a search for a uh, Ritual Beast to bounce with this. So yeah, we'll do that. Um, it's not optimal. We're, we're not playing the optimal game, apparently, but uh, but we'll, we'll do just fine, right? We will do just fucking fine. Uh, so we'll use this to banish another card just to fuel. Uh, so we'll fuel with a, a another Elder. It doesn't matter. It's just extra cards. And then I'll make this uh, Ulti Conahawk again. Uh, just so that I can get the uh, the searching off, because I want to I want to bounce this card to his hand. I want to normal summon win, bring back my Paleo, and then pump my cards by another 500. That way, it's a it's a guaranteed game shot. Um, so that seems fine. And I I don't want to start tagging out my Ritual Beast monsters um, like in an excessive amount uh, right away because of the fact that if I do that, I'm gonna start um, I'm gonna start getting to the point where. Uh, da, 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 da. They're all in defense mode, and that's not something that I want because I want to kill him this turn uh, as par our first agreement. Now, we'll just add this Rampangu. I'll use the Petal Fin to bounce this, and then even if it's something that like negates it or whatever, uh, that's fine because I've got enough damage with the other cards for it to be game anyway. Uh, because this will be 25, the Apelio will be 28, uh, and then this will be 24. So it's, it's a good fair bit of damage that we've got access to here uh, across the board. But so, uh, really strong interactions uh, that you have with this deck. In particular, this Petalfin is going to get boosted to a K. Uh, that's that's pretty cool. <laughs> I can actually make Ulti Guy Paleo if I wanted to. Um, and I actually just might. Um, it depends on uh, what is the damage threshold that we're looking at here. Um, if I make Ulti Guy Paleo, it'll be 47. Uh, but I have nothing to negate with in my hand, and I know that this is something that's not gonna do anything. So we'll just we'll just put this pedal fin in attack mode and attack for game. We'll just do that. We've got double steeds. We get steeds for potentially five. I could easily tag out. Um, I could tag into. I could contact into um, an uh, ulti pedal fin so that it's like not susceptible to Aragaki. If for some reason I didn't kill him this turn, this is all susceptible, um, like, inf this is all, uh, theoreticals on if, like, I didn't get to kill him this turn. That's the, that's the theory, but, so this is a shit ton of damage. Uh, this is a thousand, thirty-five, uh, fifty-nine, uh, plus, uh, twenty-eight, like, this is a lot. Uh, this is, this by itself is fifty-nine, and then these two are, uh, are forty-four, sixty-four. So this is sixty-four, and this is fifty-nine. This is over 10,000 damage. Uh, at least, unless my math is just horribly wrong. No, it's definitely over 10,000 because there are literally all of these that are at 24 and 25 plus. So, like, there's that. So, unfortunately, his deck is just super weak to steeds. And again, like I said, that Valor was really weird. I don't know if I agree with, like, the placement of that Valor or if I agree with the fact that he's running Valor in his deck. My, I mean, I get it. He's playing a Synchron deck. Um, so, like, Valor does double duty as a tuner. But the same thing that I already said earlier, like, still applies. Like, Valor is one of the weakest on the spectrum of hand traps right now, given what the format is, um, in terms of decks that are played in the format. It's one of the weakest hand traps, unless your deck has a very reliable and very good way to search it. Um, and I mean, like, things that are, like, super good if you resolve them, like Magical Abductor. Like, Magical Abductor of searching Valor is probably the only, like, interaction that I would see being worth playing Valor in your main deck. Uh, because even something like Sangin and Metal Foes, you just have access to better cards you could search. Like, you could search Ghost Ogre, you could search DD Crow, you could search Max C. And those cards are inherently better than Valor, and they're all equally as searchable off Sangin. So, like, the only reason I'd play Valor in a deck now would be if there was something like Magical Abductor or something, where it's an incredibly, like, stylized and specific searcher for it. Uh, so, there is that. But, anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching, and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Be sure to like and subscribe, and check out the links in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to help support me directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. It also gets you access into a monthly raffle giveaway at the end of each month, so definitely check out the details of that over on Patreon itself. But if you're looking to get into my Discord server and get onto my videos to play for dual videos, which is where Travola came from, uh, and also like my Discord server, we just always talk about random nonsense throughout the entirety of like every day. Uh, so if you're interested in that, then definitely go check out the Patreon as well. It's one of the reward tiers. But other than that, if you're looking to buy or sell cards while also indirectly supporting the channel, then be sure to check out Second Chance Gaming's website, which is also linked in the description. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and I'm a big fan of how they do business with what I've dealt with thus far. So definitely check out their site and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But other than that, that is it for this video. Again, thanks for watching, thanks for your time, and as usual guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video.